What up, this is Black, and this is my tattoo tour. The craziest thing is that my first tattoo was absolutely during spring break. <laughs> it wasn't a crazy tattoo, but it was definitely my first one. This was college spring break. I was at Valdosta State, stopped by a random tattoo shop, and I didn't know what to get, and the word self-made just popped up in my head, and that was it. Just some little cursive, just self-made, keep it simple, nothing I'll regret later. I always knew that I had a high interest in tattoos, but I didn't get one when I was growing up because I lived with my mom, and she was basically just like, if you live here, these are my rules. And when you go out there, you can do whatever you want to do. When I saw Wiz's like full montage coming up during like the flight school, cushion orange juice, how fly era, I was like, oh, those are crazy tattoos. And then Wayne, I think Wayne is like an obvious from the beginning of time. He had some very pivotal tattoos and tattoos that people can remember by photo shoot and remember by music video. So then besides that, I was always drawing and sketching. I like to jot things down and eventually use them later on in life. A good portion of my tattoos are either drawn by me or edited by me. I'm not married to like any one artist as far as doing my tattoos. There's a guy who goes by Ink by Cali from Atlanta who I work with a lot. Shout out to him. He did this sound wave of the lead single from the last album. Since I Have a Lover, he did the lover tat right there as well. And then I have a Mamba tattoo like right on the back of my neck. Homage to Kobe, my favorite athlete of all time. My favorite basketball player, my favorite mindset when it came to sports in general, Mamba mentality was how I looked at my music. When he passed, that was one of the first tattoos that I got, a little Mamba reference. This is one of my most recent ones. I got a Lotus Flower and I got Totoro. Uh, Studio Ghibli movies are some of my favorite movies. I got Gigi from Kiki's Delivery Service. Those, I believe, are my most recent ones. It'll always be my most favorite tattoo, the bear claw, because it is symbolic of the moment when I knew I would dedicate the rest of my life to what I love, which was my music. It was saying, you might not be able to get a real job with this. And this was like back during the times where tattoos were still very frowned upon. and just like, oh, you can't be visible. You gotta be presentable and you'll never get hired like that. So this was my moment of saying, I don't really wanna be hired. I just wanna do what I like. I'm trying to think of like most painful. It's not necessarily like the tattoos that are the most painful, it'll just be an area. So like anywhere near my wrist, like I have a Enzo circle over here on the right side, a Zen circle, and this part of the bear claw, like when it gets near that little bone in my wrist, it starts to rattle and that's definitely painful. Every other part of it, I try and like feel it as therapeutic and I close my eyes and listen to some music. But when it gets right there, that's when like a single tear might fall out of my eye. Most of these on this arm have something to do with interconnection or just like my mind state. So Enzo, just kind of being my homage to imperfection and finding the beauty in things that aren't complete. And then that kind of connects right into all these water symbols that just recognize my birth chart and who I am, a cancer. You have the seed of life right here, which speaks to the Genesis pattern and just how things are created and how everything ends up being connected. Yeah, then a bunch of like neighboring things like the Cancer Constellation, more water symbols, a little crab right there. Yeah, this is my, uh, this is my woke arm, I guess. Then I got some dragons on this side and I just got that after I binged Game of Thrones. And I was just like, oh yeah, this is one of my shows and Gotta pay homage. I love anything medieval, dragons, magic, kings, queens. Longest the Hill might have been this faded black panther that needs to be touched up. This was also another one of my earliest ones. Took the longest to heal because just of all the shading. And there was a moment where I thought, I'm like, we have to be almost done at this point. And I looked down and it was like this corner of it shaded black. And I was just like, what? Ah. I just find animals that like I resonate with the most. So during that time, black panthers or jaguars, Black bears, those were like my two animals that I pinged off of the most. I love their stealth, I love their strength, I love their tranquility, like when they're in their own element and undisturbed. The panther and the bear both were just like monikers that I took to the most and felt like I should uh, pay homage to. Bear claw, panther head. I'm trying to think if I have any other like animals. Oh yeah, I got a little bear right there walking. That's just a geometric bear. I feel like if you've been on Pinterest, you've seen this one a bunch of times. So Pinterest is good for inspiration. Don't let anybody tell you otherwise. 
I have a few tattoos that are dedicated to my daughter and dedicated to my favorite number. I have Six's name on my hand. I have a rose to represent her middle name. Metatron's cube, which has six points in it, but also speaks to this arm and the building blocks of everything that we know and love physically and what it all is made from. Yeah, and then the number six, the digit, I was just sketching on my iPad. It looks a lot uh, more detailed when you, when you blow it up on the iPad, but for now it's cool. I like it how it is. I think I might have told my girl during the time, but besides that, it wasn't like a premeditated, I'm about to eventually get my face tatted type of thing. My mom, you know, obviously was like, ah, why you do that? Why you mark up your face? But it's tiny, you know. Barbara is my grandmother. This was, of all the grandparents that I have, the one that I was the most closest to. I remember a good portion of my childhood growing up either around her or near her or, you know, having visits back and forth from Baltimore to Atlanta and spending time with her. After she passed, this was my tribute to her. She was a very, very sweet lady. Secrets, mm, not necessarily a secret. I have like a symbol, just like that had no defining meaning. I was just kind of making things again and I liked it and I ended up getting it tattooed behind my ear, but I never really know what it looks like. And sometimes like, I get like a little bit of dry skin back there. So it just kind of stays tucked away. And every now and then somebody's like, oh, is that a whatever? And I'm like, I honestly don't know what it looks like back there. I have no idea if it's cool or not, but maybe one day I like put a mirror to it and check it out. I got one crescent moon on my finger right here. I got one crescent moon right here along with all the water symbols and my cancer sign. If I don't have any more, I'm pretty sure I'll end up with at least a couple more. Let me see if I missed any that I wanna talk about. Oh yeah, talk about it. I have talk about it right here on my forearm. I got this in the middle of tour. For me, it was like during a time period where I kept running into the issue of having things that I was thinking about or feeling and not necessarily communicating it. And then later on, it blows up in your face and you're like, all I had to do was say this or do that and it would have completely changed the course of my day. Sometimes I just have to like glance down and give myself a simple reminder if I'm feeling it, if I'm thinking it, talk about it. On the backs of my, like right above my Isolina Love Letter uh, acronym, that was free on tour. And the free album, free six album is right there too, so. Those are some of the cheapest ones. Most expensive might have been the self-made one, of, <laughs> which is crazy because it was my first tattoo. I went to a random shop. They told me some price and I was just like, cool, sounds good to me. And when I say expensive too, I feel like something might have cost me a little bit more, but it's no reason why this should have been like $350 during that time. Yeah, they got me, it's all good though. Spring Breaker. Diamond in the Rough was, it's kind of faded. This is another one I need to get like touched up and sharpened. But just a diamond right here, the words in the rough are under it. That to me just speaks to like what I feel my process has been is my life could have been a million different things. I've been in a million different situations that have nothing to do with like musicianship or stardom or like having what you need to be in a place where I have all the essentials and the things that I need and my people are good. Diamond in the Rough represents that. This is zone six. It's like a rib tat that goes down the side. Zone six pays homage to uh, the neighborhood that I grew up in. It gave me a lot of inspiration, whether it was music related, whether it was just culture and how we dressed, whether it was dialect, lingo, slang, like that side of Atlanta was my stomping ground for most, if not all of my life. And even to this day, I still live on that side of town. So zone six is, it's with me forever. I got Speed from my cousin who passed away. Uh, his nickname was Speed. I got this one when Prince passed away. This was just my tattoo paying homage to Prince. There's a purple line running through the bottom of it. I got this one in Atlanta. Yeah, I guess I have a good amount of like tattoos that pay respects to people who are still here with us, but here in spirit. I got a compass because I'm weirdly obsessed with knowing where I am at all times. Directions and time and promptness and like those are things that I just care about even though I was late today.